Now I want to talk about the analog input pins. Um, we're going to need one of them for the voltmeter to read the voltage so that the uh, microcontroller can display it on the display. Um, the Arduino has six of them. They're along here and they're labeled A0 through A5. And they're just like any of the other I.O. pins here. Um, they can be digital inputs and digital output pins as well. Um, but in this case, there'll be an analog input pin. So they, the uh, two transistors that I talked about that drive the pin high and low, uh, they'll be both turned off so that the uh, something on the outside of the microcontroller can drive the pin instead. So each of the six pins is connected through, a, there's some switch, uh, switch logic inside the microcontroller to select one of the uh, in analog input pins and connect it up to the analog to digital converter. It's called, or the A to D converter. And the way an analog to digital converter works is it needs um, two inputs. It needs the analog input that you're going to convert, or you're going to read, and it needs a reference. And in the case of the Arduinos, the uh, V reference, the reference voltage, is actually 5 volts. It's, in fact, the same as the power supply voltage. And it could be, it's not exactly 5 volts, it varies uh, depending on, on um, what the output of the, uh, the 5 volt regulator is on the, on the board. But it's around 5 volts. Now, what an analog digital converter does is it compares the voltage on the analog pin to the 5 volt V reference. And it gives a ratio, a number that's a ratio of where the analog voltage is compared to the 5 volts. And in the uh, Arduino, in the AT Mega 328 microprocessor or microcontroller, it's a, a what they call a 10-bit analog to digital converter and what that means is it has a, um, a range of uh, well first of all 10 bits so that means 2 raised to the power of 10 and that gives you 1024 if you do the math and what that means is that it will break up this ratio or this range of voltage between 0 and 5 volts uh, into 1,024 discrete steps and so it can read uh, well the, the output the number that it'll come out of the A to D converter is anywhere between 0 and 1,023 and what it looks like is that uh, the A to D converter looks at the voltage compares it to the 5 volts and gives a number in the range of 0 to 1,023 uh, which is the same ratio as the input voltage is to the 5 volts. So if, say, the input voltage was 2.5 volts and the reference was 5 volts, so the ratio is 2.5 to 5, which is 1 half, would be 1 half of the range of this, which would be about 512 or 511. And the same thing occurs for any other number there. Another um, uh, word that we use for analog to digital conversion is called quantization. Quantization, if I get that pronounced right. Quantization. What it means is that you've got an analog input voltage that can vary in an infinite number of steps between 0 and 5 volts. But the analog converter can only convert or give it a result that's in these discrete steps. So if you take 5 volts and divide it by 1024, you get 4.88 millivolts per step. So if you apply zero volts and you slowly raise it and you do an A to D conversion, you would have to raise the voltage to greater than or just slightly over 4.88 millivolts in order for the digitizer to read one. To get to the next step, you have to add another 4.8 millivolts to get to two and to three and all the way up to 1023. So you can't get a number that's 1.5 for example, or 3.5 or whatever. It's either 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 1, 0, 2, 3. And um, so they, that's what they call it, a 10-bit converter. So you get a, a number that's in binary, which would, uh, well, we look at it in terms of two bytes. So um, the range of 
binary numbers can go from all zeros to all ten or all ten bits or ten. So say if it was a ten twenty three, the highest reading, you got five volts, you would get uh, out of there be sixteen bits in two bytes. So the first uh, six bits would all be zero. In fact, they wouldn't mean anything. And then the next two, that's the first byte. And then the second byte would have all eight bits set to one. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it takes two bytes to read the uh, A to D converter's output. They, um, the uh, Arduino function in the C code that uh, does this conversion for you is called analog read. And log read. Get this right. And in the brackets here, you put the pin number. And what it does is it you have to make it equal to some variable val or something like that equals analog read and the pin number. And what it does is it will do the conversion on whatever pin number that you've selected and give back a number that represents the range that the input pin is between 0 and 5 volts. So it'll be between 0 and 1023. Now, that number that we get out of the A to D converter is kind of meaningless because I want to read 5 volts but I get a number that's out of, in the range of 0 to 1023. So how do I correlate those two together? Well, you have to do some math in the, uh, in the software that you write in order to convert it, this number here that comes out of the analog to digital converter into a number that actually means something for us to read. Now, for uh, this digital voltmeter that we're going to make, and I mentioned it earlier in one of my earlier tutorials, um, we I decided that it was going to read a range of 0 to 15 volts. Now, you can't put 15 volts directly into the analog input pin and have it correctly read the, uh, give you a number that means something uh, out of the analog to digital converter. Um, because the 15 volts is greater than the 5 volt reference of the analog to digital converter. That would also damage the uh, microcontroller. So you need to um, drop that voltage maximum 15 volts down to a maximum of 5 volts here on the analog to input pin. And on the analog input pin. Now I talked earlier about a voltage divider in one of my tutorials. And so that's what we'll use to divide the voltage down. So we know that the voltage at this point here is going to be less than the voltage at that point. And I want to make it when this is 15 volts, this will be 5 volts. And so how do I make this work? Well, this is about a third of the total voltage here, or the total, oh yeah, the 5 volts is about a third, or is a third of the total voltage here. Therefore, the resistors are going to divide up the same way. So the resistor here is going to be one third of the total resistance here. So if I made this resistance one, this would have to be two, and that would give me the correct ratio. Now I can't put resistance as low as one and two ohms in here because um, we'd have to drive this pretty hard to get to uh, get enough current to flow through here so we can actually get five volts on this pin here. So I'm going to start with 10 K here and um, I'll use 20 K up here. Remember what K said or K means it's thousand so 20,000 ohms 10,000 ohms. So you can make this resistor up here quite easily by taking two more 10 K ohm resistors and putting them in series on this side. And so that gives us our 5 volts here and if you remember the uh, the voltage <coughs> the uh, voltage divider formula that I gave a while back so if we call this one here the 5 volts V out equals V in, which is this one, times the voltage across this one resistor that we wanted out. So that's R2 over the sum of the two resistors, R1 plus R2. Sticking numbers into that equation. So we got 15 volts times R2 is 10K 
over 10k plus 20k. So that equals 15 times, and you do the math, that's 30k, 10k there, 1 over 3 equals 5. That's how it works. Now I mentioned earlier that there will be some calculations required in the software to convert this um, value that comes out of the analog to digital converter which is in the range of 0 to uh, 1023 into a number that represents 0 and 15 volts. And uh, in an upcoming tutorial on the software I'll discuss that further. Um, for now, let's talk a bit about protecting the analog input pin here from uh, extreme voltages here. Obviously, if you could guarantee that this pin here is never going to be greater than 15 volts or more negative than zero, then you know that the voltage on this pin here is never going to be greater than 5 volts or it's not going to go negative. A negative voltage on this pin isn't going to do the microcontroller any good either. So uh, a very simple way of protecting that uh, analog input pin is to put a, a couple of diodes in. One diode will go here between the pin and the uh, 5 volt supply and the other diode would go between the pin and ground. So what would happen here if um, we started to bring this pin above 15 volts so we know that because of the ratio of the resistors here, this voltage here is going to start to rise above 5 volts. And what's going to happen is if it goes up um, high enough above 5 volts, it'll forward bias this diode here and it'll start to conduct and draw current through the resistor here and prevent this pin from going any higher than one diode drop here of about 0.7 volts above 5 volts. And that way it protects the analog input pin from any damage. Obviously, you can't bring this pin up to a thousand volts because there's be so much current flowing through here that it'll probably burn out the diode. But there, you know, within limitations, this does a really good job of protecting the pin from over voltage. If I were to draw this pin down to a negative voltage well below ground, down here somewhere, um, obviously the five volts is going to do the same thing. It's going to go start going negative. And what happens in that case is this pin here will start will go negative and it'll start to forward bias the diode so current will flow out of ground through the diode and in this way and again this voltage here at this pin will never go more than one diode drop below ground which again is a, it's an acceptable voltage on the uh, microcontroller pin it won't get the uh, microcontroller will get damaged from that so a simple protection for the input of a simple digital voltmeter um, if you're just playing around with this experimentally just for fun, um, you don't need these diodes uh, just as long as you don't put any more than 15 volts in here and take it and then don't take it below ground. Now one other thing that you might need to do is this pin here is sitting out here in the real world and it's picking up noise from uh, all the electromagnetic interference from around in, in your room from your TV or your uh, computer or whatever. And so there's some noise will get in on this, on this pin and it'll look like a voltage here that'll make this um, voltage here go up and down quite a bit. And uh, it'll, it'll get digitized by the analog to digital converter and you'll see your digital voltage readings bouncing up and down a little bit. So you might want to try to filter that out and the simple way of doing that is to just put a capacitor across the uh, input, this pin here. And ground and I'll make this one uh, an electrolytic capacitor because we want lots of capacitance here so we'll put the positive terminal of the electrolytic there and we could start at 10 microfarads and what that'll do is it just slows down how fast this pin can change now um, it won't the animal the, the the voltmeter the digital voltmeter won't respond to quick changes in voltages as much or as, as readily because this capacitor will slow down how fast this voltage here will change. But at the same time, uh, it'll tend to filter out any of the noise that might be introduced. This, the noise is something that you don't want to measure. You just want to measure the signal that's on this pin here. So, very quick, simple uh, uh, discussion on the analog input pin of the Arduino. 
And uh, like I said, I will go uh, into more details on how to actually run this thing in, in the software. So I hope you enjoyed this quick little tutorial and uh, stick around for the next one. Thanks for watching.